Hi, Bob Allison here, WB1GCM in the screen room at the ARL Laboratory. I hope you like Phil Salas's review on antenna tuners. Well, here they are. First off, here's the MFJ 994 BRT. Sturdy case, plastic on the underside, metal mounting brackets. Hookup is very simple. Transmitter goes here, the antenna goes here. If you're running a single wire, a random antenna, it goes right to this red binding post. And of course, most importantly, is the ground connection. Let's take a look inside. Hey, I got the screws off of it so we can take a look. And this is an L tuner. And this one has 197 capacitors and 197 inductor positions. And this thing automatically switches to the right ones to get the right combination to load up to uh, your antenna. Now this will match an antenna from 12 to 800 ohms uh, with a 600 watt transmitter. 500 watts on CW. And don't forget, always, make sure you run low power when you're tuning up into one of these automatic antenna tuners. You really should tune up with about 10 watts. Uh, it'll tune up the best with that amount of power too. You can do a little bit more, but I recommend minimal amount of power. It puts the least amount of strain on all these little relays that click about uh, and your, your antenna tuner will last longer. But overall, the quality is good. Nice looking circuit board here. And let's go over to what powers this antenna tuner. Look, there's no electrical connections on this thing. Well, how does it get its power? Well, it runs on DC and it runs off of a 12 volt power supply. This is called over here the bias T switch. And what this does, when you turn it on, it'll provide DC power down the coax to your antenna tuner. Now it's really important. Make sure you put this bias T power supply, see it's hooked up to 12 volts, make sure you put that after any kind of coax switch. Because when you switch away from this automatic antenna tuner, that port will ground and if the bias T is on this side of the switch, it'll short out and it'll burn up the bias T DC switch. So please remember that. And now let's see that big antenna tuner Phil reviewed. It's the MFJ 998 RT. 1500 watts CW and single sideband IntelliTuner. It's the legal limit. Now just because it's bigger, that doesn't mean that you can load it up with 100 watts or so. Try and keep that power down to about 10 watts. It puts a lot less stress on all those internal parts and components and the relay switches. Um, just like its uh, little brother, it has the ground post, the uh, transmitter input with DC from your bias T power supply, uh, your uh, wire binding post for a single wire antenna, nice porcelain insulator here, and of course if you want a coaxial output, you have one right here. A sturdy bracket for mounting onto all sorts of uh, things, a wooden shed, maybe the side of your garden shed be a nice place for this, or in a bulkhead of a big fishing boat, mm, nice solid plate here. Um, this particular antenna tuner can load up antennas between 12 ohms and 1600 ohms. That's a, a very wide range. Although testing in the lab, I noticed that uh, on the higher bands, like 10 meters, there's a little bit more loss when you get up to 800 ohms and, and, and maybe 600, 400, a little bit more loss. So maybe you don't want to transmit with a higher duty cycle for long periods of time with this particular antenna tuner. But it's still a very durable uh, unit for sure. Now let's talk about our test setup that we have here in the screen room. We have a mysterious driver behind me. It's a transceiver that I will adjust to 10 watts. And what I do without the antenna tuner in line is I'll adjust the driver to read 10 watts here and 10 watts at the very end of the chain. I have an HP power meter that'll actually say one milliwatt. That one milliwatt will equal 10 milliwatts. So without anything in line, I can equalize those two power meters. Then I stick the antenna tuner in line, then I look at the output meter, adjust the input power to 10 watts, look at the uh, at the end of the line at the power there and I can determine what the efficiency of the antenna tuner is. Let's see how these uh, two. In fact, we'll turn on the driver over here and we'll be doing something mischievous. We'll disconnect the, the load and this thing should start um, tuning around. 
oh dear, what do I do, what do I do? It's tuning, 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 tuning. Eventually that will stop and then uh, beep at you. So now let's put the load back on. It'll find what that is and it'll stop and we'll turn up the power to read 10 on that meter right there and oh look I have uh, 0.965 uh, milliwatts. Hey that's, uh, that's an efficiency of 98%. Not bad. There's nothing more I like than putting up antennas, amateur radio antennas, but I always look out for overhead power lines or any other snags that will get me into trouble. Please make sure you don't put up any antenna that can come in contact or fall onto a power line. It can and will kill you. I'm Bob Allison, WB1GCM at the ARL Laboratory.